like this energy. You're stressing me out. I'm already stressed out. Like, this is a fun. Hi, love. My name is Lindsay, if this is your first time here. But if you've been tuning in, what's up? What's good? What's tea? Welcome back. As you can tell from the title, this will be the last part of this like little series about my flight attendant experience. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about my IOE experience and ultimately why I decided not to become a flight attendant. So I know there's probably like a lot of questions like you went through the interview process, you went through the whole month of training, you did the IOE. I was literally three days away from graduating and I was like, yeah, that's not for me, which I mean, it happens and I'm honestly very grateful for the opportunity and for the experience overall, but if you want to hear how my IOE went and how I kind of came to this conclusion that flight attendant life isn't for me, then just keep on watching. Those one girls where we both from, so I might break one through the night, I heard it's more fun. Staring at my body as I lead you on, I know I turn you on. Okay, so if you haven't watched my other videos, my flight attendant interview experience, my flight attendant training experience, then you should probably like watch those videos to get caught up and then come back to this one. If you've already seen those videos and you've been waiting to kind of hear the next part, this is for you. After we completed training, so this is basically our last week of training, and it is, I believe we started IOE, it was like on a Thursday, so we, our schedule was, it's three days, so IOE stands for, I believe, Initial Operating Experience, so we are basically going through the airport, getting on the planes, and kind of learning how and what to do, like, as a flight attendant. At this point, not actual flight attendants. I thought we were just gonna shadow, you know, watch to see how flight attendants do the pre-flight of the plane, how they would do boarding, how they do service, how they just do the um, PAs and different announcements. And we were just gonna sit back and kind of watch this all the way through because in training, yeah, we touched on how to do each phase of flight, but we never really went and actually did it from beginning to end in training and I me and a few other um, people were thinking like we spent so much time like the bulk of training is learning about like emergencies and what to do in different emergency situations and scenarios we really didn't learn in depth from beginning to end this is what you do this is how it's gonna go and this is how things will be every single time that you work on a flight but I guess in their minds they're like the more you do it the more you'll understand and you'll kind of find your groove wrong so my first day which was that Thursday I had a flight from base to Tennessee and then I had the flight back and it was on a plane that had first class so there were two flight attendants flight attendant one and flight attendant two a lot of people's IOE experience was very different from mine. I really overall had a good IOE experience. My flight attendants were on time. They were so sweet. They briefed me. The pilot briefed me on my first day and it was like a really good experience. I was so nervous but it was like okay. Even like down to getting to the airport it was super easy. Didn't have to sit through TSA. Kind of just went in and it was like it took maybe five minutes when we got there, there was a woman there and she was supposed to be kind of like, she's a manager or what? But she was just like telling us what to expect, where everything is, giving us codes to places, how we check in for our flights. Just basically like a little rundown, which was nice. Um, once I got to my gate, I met flight attendant, the flight attendant number one, who I was going to be flying with first. And she had been flying for about like over 20 years since like the 90s so probably since before I was born she was flying so she kind of had the way that she did things and she was kind of like explaining that to me we met the pilot he gave us a pre-flight briefing and then we got onto the plane and she was just like at first again I thought I was gonna just sit back relax watch her kind of do her thing no absolutely not she was like okay so go ahead and pre-flight and I was like okay and so I pre-flighted all the equipment and then we were getting ready to like set up for service she was just again telling me how she did things and then she's like okay it's time for boarding and I was like 
okay so we took our boarding positions we were boarding everyone she was like okay make sure that you're checking for this checking for that and I was again so nervous so that went well and then so she had me do all of the PAs and she's like okay well make sure that your PAs are pulled up on your tablet again so nervous like voice shaking delivering these PAs and again we had never really went from beginning to end of how everything to how everything is gonna go what PAs to say what to do like so all of this was like I was basically listening to everything that she was telling me and so um the first flight there it was cool like the way that she did service was very different from how we were taught about service for first class but again this is her flight I'm the trainee whatever she said I just kind of did it I didn't really question anything she was pretty she was kind of chill but it was kind of like she just did her own thing whatever she wanted to do that's what she did so we made it there everyone deplaned and then because we were going to be on the same actual aircraft we didn't have to pre-flight again so then i went to the back of the plane and met with the second flight attendant and he was like typically since we're on the same plane we're not going to pre-flight again but because you're training i'll go ahead and have you pre-flight so that was cool he pre-flight it again with being flight attendant too for boarding like you don't really do anything kind of just sit there if someone needs help like put in their bags in the bin then you'll do that we did that and then we're flight attendant too. You're the one who actually has to do the safety demo. So that was interesting too. Then with service, he actually helped me through the service. And then we kind of just like chilled in the bag. We restocked and um, just talked and kind of got to know each other. And we landed and everything was smooth. So from that first day, just from those two flights, I was exhausted exhausted i would say i had been up since like 11 maybe even earlier um because i had to like go get breakfast and then iron my uniform do my makeup i want we were told to get to the airport an hour and a half before boarding but i got there two hours early because we had to take a shuttle so i was just up so by the time we got back i think we landed it was like 9 40 p.m and i still had to like get off the plane, wait for the shuttle, and get back to the hotel. So by the time I got back to the hotel room, like, I was literally exhausted. And I was so dehydrated because of, like, just being in the air and, I guess, not drinking enough water. So I was like, okay, it didn't go as smoothly as I thought it was going to be. I mean, again, it wasn't bad, but I just felt very unprepared. And I'm the type of person, like, I like to know what's expected of me. I like to know exactly what to do. So the second day which was the next day my flight was from base to florida and then from florida back to base and so again it was the same um bigger aircraft that had a first class so there was two flight attendants now my flight attendant one she had been in the industry and working for those airlines for a while but she wasn't as sweet as the flight attendants were like previously she was very much so like by the book this is what you do this is what you don't do like i like she's very like boom 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 what they taught you is what you do and again this is my second day and i still feel like i feel more comfortable because of the day before but i was still feeling like really nervous really kind of like unprepared and because my flight attendants the day before were super like relaxed like kind of had did their own thing it was just different working with someone who was like so by the book and she was like very very strict and I was like I don't like this energy you're stressing me out I'm already stressed out like this is a fun and then the flight attendant too she was so sweet I mean she was pretty by the book as well um but it was just it was interesting because at this point I have worked with four different flight attendants and they all did everything differently and even when I was on the second day with the second flight attendant and I had to do service of the main cabin she made me do it all by myself like I don't know it just felt like I was just like thrown to the wolves and I just mm. I was like oh yeah again the people like the flight attendants were so sweet but they just did everything so differently and after working those two flights those two days I was like how the hell am I gonna do this all day damn near every day like what the hell so um that day I was actually supposed to have one more flight after we landed at six I had um 
a two hour just like wait in between that flight because I was supposed to fly out to do it overnight. So got off that flight. It's like 6. I was supposed to depart the next flight at 8.50. So I had about like two and a half hours in between. And I went and got food and I kind of like just sat and was just like really... I sat outside because I was just like not claustrophobic but I just felt like I needed fresh air. And I called my mom and I was just like... I don't know if this is for me and she was like what do you mean like what's going on what happened so I kind of just explained like nothing in particular like really happened but I just don't know if this is something that I want to do every single day and my mom's so supportive like any for those who know her like she supports she has supported me through everything that I've ever wanted to do and she's never made me feel inadequate for my decisions or that I made poor choices even when I probably have um she's my number one supporter and always has been so she was just telling me like if that's what if this was your decision and you don't want to do it then don't do it and I was like I'm supposed to be getting on a plane in an hour to like go to my overnight but I know if I get on that plane and work on that plane to the overnight I would have to at least work the next flight in the morning to get back and I was just like I don't want to get on this plane I don't want to do it I really 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 do not want to do it and so I had called a couple other people and I was like texting some of my friends who were in the training program about like their experience and kind of telling them that I don't think that I want to continue like finishing IOE or finishing training to, or graduating